Hello friends, my name is Habib. Today we're going to learn how to make this cool background animation using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So, first you have to set up. Uh, first you have to set up. Like how I set up. Now, in your browser you could just write pen pen not pen 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 dot new to create a new code pen but for me i'm going to use feature studio code now if you don't know how i did all this then you can watch my introduction to html video where i'm going to show you how i set up my files so anyways i've got firefox f tools opened and yeah so i'm going to create this today Seems pretty intimidating, but in reality, it's actually very simple. I managed to do this in like one minute. So, the first thing you have to do is our link CSS to the HTML. I hope you didn't forget how to link CSS to HTML. And then, link the JavaScript. Yeah, JavaScript. The HTML. Ugh, reload. I'm too lazy to reload. I might just. just so, anyways, I'm going to open up the console again. So, yeah, we need to do something first. Well, uh, the something I'm going to do first is that I'll give this thing radial gradient. No, I meant to have to give it the background of radial gradient. Uh, how could I forget? Let's have a radiant radial gradient of transparent and crimson that's a cool radial gradient now you see sadly it repeats now why does this repeat exactly well before i show you i have to set the background repeat to no repeat Hey, wait a minute, I didn't spell background properly. So, yeah, to demonstrate to you, when the background that you image, that you select, like if you select a background image, if it is not big enough to cover the entire screen, then the background is going to, then the browser is going to be repeating the background until it's going to cover the entirety of the screen. Which, well, we don't want to make a bunch of lines, we want to make a a checkered pattern but this is actually a good thing because we can use it to our advantage I can set the background size to say 10 pixels and 10 pixels uh, no 10 pixels is not optimum also let me change to a less eye burning color like corn flower just a perfect amount of uh, mildness so you can see how we could use it to our advantage now we set the size to 50 pixels so now it creates this cool checkered pattern of course it's not truly checkered it's still this rubbish gradient it's still this rubbish gradient so we, we obviously don't want now there is a trick you can if I set this these to the same value, then there's not going to be any gradients at all. It's just going to be a hard, sur boring circle. You can either set these six to the same value, or you can set this first one to like a bigger value than the second one. It's going to work. But if you set this first one to a smaller value than the second one, it's going to just uh, that rubbish gradient again. But yeah. 
I think it's better to have the two values be the same thing instead. Okay. So, we have this. We have what we need to make the effects. But where exactly is the animation? I don't, I don't really know. But, I am going to create a CSS variable called S. And what this S is going to be is like uh, to calc to SVW, SVW, why do I keep to SVW plus to SVH. SVH. I wonder why it's just it's like this sometimes. Have to betray me. So, I can set this to the var. That does s. So everything basically is is exactly the same. Now this SVW and SVH basically makes it so that it's going to change the size relative to how big the screen is. So it's uh, pretty cool. So anyways, that is not what we're talking about. So how are we meant to make these circles to be... Well, if you look closely in the effect, you see that there's nothing special to it. The circles are just increasing and decreasing in size. So how are we meant to do that here? Well, remember that trick I showed you before? Yeah, this... Well... We can reduce these two values to reduce the size of the circle and increase the two values to increase the size of the circle. See? So, what we want to do is that we want to manipulate these values so that well, we can get that cool animation. So, I'll get a script variable called size, which I'll set to 0%. So, I'll set to var just as size. Now you see that everything has, is basically just consumed by blue. And now, why are we doing all this? It just seems unnecessary, creating these variables. Well, we need to do something important with them. You see, we can manipulate CSS variables using JavaScript. There are other ways to manipulate CSS styles, but yeah, we can manipulate CSS variables using JavaScript. So how do we do that? Hmm, I'm thinking how. Well, we can create a function called don't. And the function is uh, don't. And then we can create a variable called s. It's going to increment by 1. No, 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 I'm going to the s is equal to 0. And then I'm going to increment s by 1. And then uh, I will use the document dot body dot style dot set property. And then first I have to choose the property I want to set, which is dash dash size. And then I can set this to. I use this. Oh no, it's this s percentage. Now you see that. Well, this doesn't really do anything. Why? Because this function only runs once. If we wanted this to, you know, take more effect, they have to run this function over and over again multiple times. Well, that is where request animation frame comes in. Request animation frame, it allows you to animate with functions. So what this basically does, it's just like recursion. You know, request animation frame makes it so that the function is not going to run once, but the function, when you call the function, it's going to be running over and over again. So that is why this is good for like things like games. And now you see that we have this. Also remember 
that if you forget to put your you know sink here like let's say you put it here it's not going to work because well yes it is updating the variable but it only updates the actual you know this variable it only updates it once so we have to put it in here so that it can be updated every single time this updates so we have this but then it just kind of disappears into oblivion not really what we wanted what do we do well well if you've done maths before then you know about something called sign you see the sign you see the sign it's it's really unusual You know, like let's say I'll say x equals sine y. No, I meant y equals sine x. Hey, no. You see that it will create this kind of loop, create this kind of wave. So it is going to. Now let's say this is zero and this is one. It's going to go from zero to one to and then back to zero to go from uh zero to one back to zero. One zero one zero one zero one zero one zero two zero zero, and then it just keeps going on like that forever. So this could be used to create things that you know it's just use zero one, just be going from zero to one zero to one forever. And now we can change how long this graph is by uh by multiplying it like you multiply by two multiply by multiply by ten. It's going to become very long. This is uh. 0 100 and then we can also change the speed of the graph by multiplying it so if i want it to be really fast to be really dense i can change multiply it by 10 if i want it to be really spaced out i can multiply it by 0 0.1 which does this to be really spaced out so how is this better to help us well it's how we're going to use this exact same thing so if I take two, this to s, I can set it to sine s. Now it currently doesn't do anything because, well, the sine wave it is too small to notice. I can multiply this by tire by hundred, uh, by thousand maybe. Yeah, uh, just get another variable called ss equals equals zero. I said s equals plus equals one and s equals sine s s ha i meant s equals sine s not plus equals now let's say no 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 not double sign that's, that's creepy pasta so yeah uh, let's say i multiply this by uh one thousand now you could just not see anything well that is because it is going too fast it is going so fast you cannot even you cannot even see it's changing so we have to severely severely slow this down hey 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 uh i multiply it by like a thousand and put this here also let me set this to times 100 Maybe we need to be a bit slower. Wait, what if I set this to S plus equals? S equals one.
console.log s Ah, oh, an error. Sign is not defined. Ah, oh, so that's the problem this entire time. Not that my code was wrong. This is mass dot sign. Uh, now I feel so stupid. That was the problem all along. It's mass dot sign. Should have checked the console. So cool uh, reload so school cool school but too slow cool but too fast so fast you could even see that terrible gradient school uh yeah so we've basically just created the same thing here now we need something to go with it hmm what should we do I know. Mass is fun. Now it doesn't really have anything to do with what we're talking about here, but nobody cares. Yeah, let me put it in there. This cool background effects. No, no, no. Cool background animation, not effects. Now. Now, you might be wondering, why can't we have just used CSS animation instead of using all this rubbish sine, cos, tan, theta? Well, the problem with CSS animation is that it cannot animate radial gradients. So, if we use CSS animation, it will not be able to animate this radial gradient. So, for anyone of you, you people who do their stuff, you might be wondering, why can't we just use CSS Houdini? Well, if you see CSS Houdini, well, we'll be able to animate it, but it won't support all of the browsers, especially Mozilla Firefox. Mozilla Firefox doesn't support it yet. Oh, let me play with some background blending mode. Mix blend mode. Oh, have all this. Oh yeah, overlay. Really is a good one. Uh, it's not as good as I expected it to be. I guess that is a crimson. No, no, no. This is crimson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, that is it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel, Obacode. Bye.